Shalom. Call Halal, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this truth and rule well. Salutation and citations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you I say Shalom, to the Akim and to the Akwaf, that would be you brothers and sisters, Adawan Ratazah, that is to say Lord willing, hopefully by the end of this lesson you will be edified. This is your brother Amawan Ibad from the GMS Miami camp. Back again with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bah Hashem, Yahweh Shai, to feed the lambs of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, as commanded. And this lesson today is going to be entitled, We Are the Fishers of Men, and the Lord's Word is the Bait. Okay, once again, we are the fishers of men, and the Lord's Word is the bait. Okay, food for the brain. Okay, um, this lesson today was inspired by the elder apostle Gabar. All right, I was listening to his lesson today entitled The Judas Goat. It says, Using wisdom is for cowards. Okay, um, you can find that video on his channel, uh, Daily Edification 4. Uh, subscribe and be edified. So, yeah, um, the elder said something I thought was really profound in this video today. Uh, he had mentioned how uh, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Uh, you know, the Lord's word is debate, you know, that we use. And, um, yeah, I was inspired by that. So, you know, I, I, I say I'm going to make a video on it, you know. And I, I entitled it, We Are the Fishes of Men, and the Lord's word is debate, okay? So, that bait literally, literally is food for the brain, man, okay? So, um, uh, at, at about the 19 minute, 24 second mark, uh, that's where he had mentioned it. He had went into it. So we're going to listen to a little piece of it on the video. And then we're going to jump into the lesson. We're going to get straight to the point. So let's listen to, the, listen to a portion of it. And then we're going to get into some scriptures. And Lord willing, by the end of the lesson, you'll be edified. Here we go. So the fishes, which are sheep right now, our, our main job is to fish for the elect. Using this knowledge, this truth, and debate. That's our main job. That's the mission fish for the elect using the word right now once that's done the lord said this is what the lord said not what i said it's what the lord said you hear it right there let's 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 play that back again we're going to play it back one more time and then we're going to get into the scriptures okay let's play it one more time kill so the fishes which are sheep right now our main job is to fish for the elect using this knowledge, this truth, and debate. That's our main job. That's the mission. To fish for the elect using the word, right? Right. So the, the word is being used as the bait to fish for the elect, you see? So that's the point, all right? So now, you know, in the scriptures, the word is likened unto... Uh, milk okay uh honey okay water all the things that you need in life to sustain you okay <laughs> oil the word is likened unto wine you see uh the word is likened unto bread you see so this is this is the bait we are we are the fishes of men and the lord's word is the bait and this word is likened to these different these different things that you need to sustain you in life. You see? Um, so, hopefully, by the end of this lesson, you'll be edified. We're going to get some scriptures to show you how, all right, we are fishes of men, first and foremost. And then we're going to show you how, through the scriptures, through the spirit and power of the Abba Shinar Shai, um, us, the fishes, the prophets, the men of the Lord, okay, the watchers, all right, we use the word, his word, the Lord's word, as bait, okay? So, first things first, let me turn off this, um, let me turn off this uh, notification. 
Okay. And then uh, we're going to get straight to the scriptures. This is, we're going to start in the book of um, Matthew. Okay. Once again, the title for the lesson, we are the fishes of men and the Lord's word is debate. So these first two uh, verses, this first two, this first passage in the next precept is going to be showing you how we are fishers. This is Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. It says, And Yahweh Shai, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishers. Okay, so at that time, they was fishing, okay, they was fishing for fish in the sea, okay, which you need bait for them, or you could use net, you know, some people use net, you know, um, Read now in verse 19, it says, And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishes of men. Okay, this is red letter at this point. This is our Lord Yahweh Shai. It says, verse 19 again, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, He said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishes of men. So the men of the Lord that are sent out to the highways and to the byways, okay, to make the bodies a living sacrifice unto the Most High, Yahweh Shai, okay, we are considered fishers of men. Okay? Verse 20, it says, And they straightway left their nets and followed him. How did you think that happened? That was the spirit, man. That was the Lord. Okay? The Lord had powers, man. Through the spirit, they know that it, it was the right thing to do was to follow the Lord. Okay? It says, And they straightway left their nets and followed him. That's the spirit, man. You see? Um, next scripture we're going to go to. Uh, we're going to get, and the, the elder apostle Gabar brought this out. We're going to get it in this lesson. This is Jeremiah chapter 16, and verse 16. It says, Behold, I will send for many fishers. Right, that's the men of the Lord, all on the highways and the byways. Okay, that's doing the work, doing those sit down, making those video epistles. Okay, like how the apostle Paul used to make those epistles, those letters to the churches. Well, in this time, Okay, the men of the Lord are doing that through sit down, sit downs, making their videos and posting it up on particularly YouTube. You know, you have other uh, uh, platforms, but YouTube would be the main one. Okay, okay, you have Odyssey. You know, you have, you have different different uh, platforms, but like I said, YouTube would be the particular one. All right, so the word goes out on the, on the unicorn. And it says, Behold, I will, I'll read it again, Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Lord, and they shall fish them. Okay, meaning the believers, man. The elect, those are, that are of the elect when they hear this word. Okay, finishing out the, um, the, 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 the verse, it says, And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain. And from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. So these same fishes who the Lord sent, a time is going to come where they're going to become hunters, meaning they're going to get that spiritual power as a reward for the work that they've been doing as fishers. Okay, but the point is, it says, Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Lord, and they shall fish them. So right now at this moment, we are fishers, man. All right? And, and, and as, as uh, pertaining to the title of this lesson, we are the fishers of men. And the Lord's word is his bait. The Lord told, okay, uh, 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 Simon, Peter, all right, and his brother, okay, that I'm going to make you fishers. Say so you're going to make them fishers of men. So we are fishers of men, and the Lord's word is the bait. Okay? All right, so now that we established that, let's get some scriptures to show you how, through the spirit and power of the Abashim Shai, how um, the word is, Okay, all right, it's likened onto bread, you know, which is which would be the bait. Okay, all right, water, wine, oil, okay, milk. Let's get uh, we're gonna start in the book of St. John. So we're gonna get St. John, the sixth chapter, and we're gonna jump in here at uh, 32nd verse. And this is our Lord Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, um, it says, Then Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily, verily, which means truly, truly, I say unto you, Moses gave you not 
not bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. It says, verse 33, for the bread of the Most High is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. That's speaking of Yahweh man. He is that bread. Okay, one of his titles is the word of God. Okay, reading on, it says, uh, uh, verse 34, it says, Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, remember the bread is the bait, right? It says, And Yahweh Shai said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. You see, shall never thirst. The scriptures say, uh, what's that? St. John, the seventh chapter, in the 38th verse, he that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Okay, you're not going to be a hunger or a thirst, okay, if if if, if the Abba Vashim Yahushua is supping with you, man. Okay, meaning uh, lacking wisdom. You're not going to lack wisdom, man, if the Lord's supping with you, man. Okay? Uh, the next one we're going to get, so that was bread. Okay? Uh, that was going into bread. Let's get, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get honey. Showing you how the word is likened onto honey, man. Okay, Revelation. All right, Revelation chapter, let's get 10. Let's get the apostle. Let's get uh, our forefather, John the Revelator. Okay, it says, I start of verse 7, it says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of the Most High should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea, and open and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him give me the little book and he said unto me take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey okay so this word is likened unto honey okay it's likened unto bread it's likened unto honey you see so yeah <laughs> these these are the things man it's that this word is likened unto okay we're going to go from there. We're going to go to the book of uh, uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, the fourth chapter. Uh, I, is it Isaiah, the fourth chapter? No, Isaiah, the 24th chapter. It speaks about wine. Yeah, let me get that one now. Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. And uh, verse 11, I think. It is, right? It says, uh, So when the famine of the word come in and you can't get this word no more, okay, the scripture speaks about this. This is Isaiah 24 and 11. It says, There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is dark and the mirth of the land is gone. So when the famine of the word kicks in, all right, if you didn't get that understanding when during the grace period, okay, when you had liberty to do so, okay, the scripture is saying it's going to be a crying. There is a crying for wine in the streets. So the point is the word is likened unto wine. The knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is likened unto wine. People are going to be crying for wine in the street, meaning they're going to want the understanding of what's happening around them, but they ain't going to have it if they didn't get it during the grace period. You see? So that's just a scripture to show you how the word is likened unto wine. Okay? The word is likened unto bread. The word is likened unto honey. The word is likened unto wine. Let's get another one in Isaiah. Uh, what's that? Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. And verse 1. It says, Ho, everyone that thirsted, come to the waters. You see, that's another thing the scripture is likened unto the waters. Okay, and he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine. Okay, wine and milk without money and without price. You see, the word is likened unto to, 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 to water. Okay, wine, 
milk. You see? There's no going around it, man. Let's get a uh let's get a let's get those milk scriptures. Uh uh Peter's first Peter's. Let's go to first Peter's. We're gonna get first Peter's chapter two and verse two. It says, as newborn babes, when you come into the truth, okay, when you come into this truth, okay, all right, because we are fishes of men, and the Lord's word is the bait, all right, so the, the word is, is used as, as bait, but as newborn babes, it says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, so you remember what Yahweh Shai told Nicodemus, Except a man be reborn, okay? Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So you have to come into this thing as a newborn baby, literally brainwashed. So when you get that brainwashed from all the, 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 the filth of the world, then you can be refed with that food for the brain, which is that wine, okay? That good wine, that good bread, okay? That, that that good water, all right? That good milk, that good oil. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the word, the word is likened onto these things, man. All right. Let me read it again. First Peter chapter two and verse two. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby. So milk is another, uh, 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 you know, food that, okay, which is used as, as bait. Okay, uh, 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 that you need to grow thereby, man. Okay, uh, let's go back to Isaiah. We're gonna get Isaiah the twenty-eight chapter. Okay, jumping in at verse nine. It says, "Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, okay, and drawn from the breast." You see, you got to come in new as, as a newborn babe, man. Desire the sincere milk. So you got to be weaned from the milk. The word, okay, you got to be studying. The scripture said to study to show thyself approved. You got to get, okay, you got to, the scripture said to be diligent to make your calling and election sure. So you, you got to start from scratch, man. You got you to gotta be born again, okay, and start from the milk scriptures before you get the heavy meat. It's a scripture that speaks about that. Scriptures even known as meat. That's why sometimes we say, you know, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Okay, we're going we're gonna to get that scripture too. It says, Whom shall he teach doctrine? And whom shall he make to understand? Slack here. It says, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay, so when you come into this thing, you come into the truth. Okay, when you when you caught by the bait. Okay, at the end of the day, scriptures say of uh, 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 Paul uh, planted in Apollo's water, but it's the Most High who gave the increase. At the end of the day, we use we use we we are fishes of men, and we use the Lord's word as as bait, but it's the Most High who gives the increase. It's the Most High who brings you in and gives it to His Son Yahushai. Okay, it's in John the sixth chapter and the forty fourth verse. Verse goes into that. Okay, but um, uh, let me see if I can locate this scripture real quick where it says, uh, let's talk about Apostle Paul speaking about meat, need of meat. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Need of meat. So when you come into this thing, you get the milk scriptures before you get the meat. Let me see. Um, so the word is even likened unto meat. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, this is the book of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. It says, for when, it says, for when, for when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not strong meat. You see, you have to, you have to be a babe first when you come into this thing. It says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. See, you got to come in as a babe. You got to be reborn. 
It says, but strong meat belonging, so the word is likened unto meat also, right? But strong meat belonging to them that are full age, meaning those who've been in this thing a while, studying and studying to show themselves approved unto the most high workmen that need not to be shamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth, as the scripture say, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 15, right? It says, but strong meat belonging to them that are of a full age, even those who by reason of, 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 of use of their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. You see? Hey, there's, there is no going around it. You see? There is no going around it. So, yeah, the scripture is likened unto uh, many uh, different things. Okay? Oil. The scripture is likened unto oil. Let's get that. So, lucky. Let's go. Let's get the... Uh, Real quick, we're going to read the account with uh, uh, the, the ten virgins, five, uh, five, were, uh, five were wise, four were foolish, like here. five were foolish and five were wise, okay, um, where is that again, Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, we're going to jump in there. We're going to read it real quick. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. It says, They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Okay? The oil is likened unto the, to the word, the truth, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It says, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarry, who's the bridegroom? Yahushai. They all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Okay. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Okay, and it says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. This is why you got to stay ready so you don't got to get ready, right? It says, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the doors were shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, verily I say unto you, I know you not. Where, it says, watch therefore. For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So the point is, you got to keep your oil, man. Okay, the oil is, it, 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 the, the, the word is likened unto oil also. All right? So you got to, hey, you got to keep your oil in your vessels, man. Okay? You got to be ready. Stay ready so you don't got to get ready. All right? So from that, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Psalms. Psalms 104. The book of Psalms 104. And we're going to, I'm going to jump in here at verse. I'm going to start at verse 1 and read down to 3, and I'm going to jump down to 13. It says, Bless Yahweh, O my soul, O Lord, my power, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who coverest thyself with light as a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who laid the beams of his chambers in the waters, who make it the clouds his chariot, who walk it upon the wings of the wind. This is speaking about Yahweh, okay, the heavenly Father. All right, jump down to verse thirteen. It says he he watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Okay? Remember this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is likened unto these different foods. It says, verse 15, And wine that make it glad the heart of man. Okay, that word heart in the Hebrew is lab, which means your mind. And wine that make it glad the heart of man. Okay? And oil to make his face to shine. And bread which, stretch, which strengtheneth man's heart. Okay, remember the Hebrew word for, 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 for heart is lab, which means your mind. 
It says, the trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he had planted. Okay? You see, at the end of the day, the word is likened unto wine. Verse 15 says, and wine that make it glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. Okay, all of these things, the word is likened unto these things. Verse 16, again, it says, the trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted. Right, when I think of that last verse, Okay, that make me think of, you know, the scriptures say, those whom the Lord has planted, you would not be able to pluck them up, man. You wouldn't be able to pluck them out of the Lord's hand. Right, so this is uh, Psalms, the first chapter, it says, Bless, it is the, bless is the man that walketh in, walk it not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law Doth he meditate day and night? Those who are of the Lord, they're going to be seeking the Lord and meditating on the Lord. Yahabashim Yahashai. Verse 3 is the point. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Okay? Remember, uh, people are likened, and uh, nations are likened to trees in the scriptures. Okay? He shall be like a tree planted. Okay? The scriptures say those whom he give to a, a, a Yahweh Shai, they, they, they're not going to be plucked out of his hand, man. Those whom he have planted. He shall be like a tree planted, okay, by the rivers of water. Remember, the scriptures are likened unto waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, okay, we likened unto a tree. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You see? You see that? So, even the scriptures tell you that. All right, let's get the scripture right here. Let's go to the apocrypha. The scriptures tell you about the things that, that you need for life, the mean things that you need for life. And most of those things, the scriptures speak about. Uh, uh, the, the, the word is likened unto these same things, man. Let's get it. Uh, it's Ecclesiastes, otherwise known as Sirach, verse 39 and verse 26. It says, the principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, right? We went through that, the scriptures is likened unto water. Fire, now these ones, I'm going to get some scripture for them. Iron and salt, flour of wheat, what is flour of wheat? That's bread, and the scriptures is likened unto bread. Honey, the scriptures is likened unto bread, we went through that. Milk, <laughs> it's likened unto the word, okay? All right? Honey is likened unto the word. Milk is likened unto the word. Bread is likened unto the word. It says, and the blood of the grape, which is wine, likened unto the word. Okay? And it says, and oil, likened unto the word. And clothing, even clothing, because the scripture speaks about your garment. Keep your garment. Okay? You see that? All of these things that's mentioned right here. Let me read this again. Ecclesiastes 39, verse 26. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water. We went through that already. Fire. Let's get a scripture on the fire. Let's get a scripture on fire. Come back to this real quick. Uh, let me use a different app so I, I don't have to change it. Uh, mm, did I want to use that one there? Uh, let's go. What is it? Uh, Jeremiah. Let's get Jeremiah. Jeremiah 5 and 14. Okay. The Lord's word is even likened unto fire. Right now with all of these food ingredients, you could cook a pot. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, this, this is Matthew. How would I put Matthew? Okay. Jeremiah we're looking for. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 5 and 14. Jeremiah 5 and 14. It says, Wherefore thus said the Lord, power of hosts, because he speak these word, that's slacky, because he speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. You see? And this people would, and it shall devour them. You see that? Wherefore thus said the Lord, power of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire and this people would and it shall devour them see the word is likened even unto fire the word is likened on what, what was the other one iron let's go back to it iron 
Iron was the next one. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron. What scriptures come to mind with, 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 with the iron? Hebrew 4 and 12. A double-edged sword. sword. A sword is made out of iron, man. Okay? I'm sure they have swords with made out of different other things, but iron is the real deal. Okay? Um, let's get a... Uh, where is it again? Uh, Hebrews. New Testament. Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Let's get Hebrews. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and the 12th verse goes into double-edged sword. A sword is made from iron, right? It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. So the word is even sharper. You see that? Sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit out of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So this is even, the word is even sharper than any double-edged sword. But we know that a double-edged sword is, is, is mainly made from iron. Okay. Um, uh, another scripture. Okay. Let's get something to back that up. Let's get a... Uh, Let's get Jose, Hosea, because the scripture speaks about hewing them by the prophet. So the scripture say, it's talking about the words, and the words are sharper than any double-edged sword. This word cut you, man. And who's swinging that? The prophets is swinging these words, man. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, let's get, uh, where's that, Hosea? Okay, right here. The book of Hosea, chapter uh, 6. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 5. It says, Therefore have I hewed them. Okay, hewed. Hewed mean to chop, man. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets and have slain them by the words of my mouth and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. Okay, so with that double-edged sword, this word is sharper than a double-edged sword, which is made from iron. <laughs> it says, Therefore have I hewed them Okay, which means to chop. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets, and I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. Okay, now, another scripture I'm going to use just to back that up to show you real quick how, uh, okay, in the scriptures, a lot of similar tools is used. Okay, so let's get this real quick just to back up the point. It says, this is Hosea chapter 10 and verse it's like in Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. It says, I have also spoken by the prophets and I have I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So a lot of different similitudes are, are, are used, man, okay, throughout the scriptures and, 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 and the men of the Lord, okay? You see, so this, this is how the word is likened onto all of these different things, similar tools, you know, likened to onto water, you know, honey, okay, um, uh, 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 you know, wine, bread, oil, it's similar tools, man. That's how the word is likened onto. You see, so yeah, but uh, it also mentions salt. Right? When you go back to, because uh, it's speaking about the principal things for life. It says the principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt. Okay? We, we got wheat of, wheat of flour of wheat, which is bread. Okay, that used to make bread. Wheat bread, bread, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, which is wine and oil. All of these things is likened onto the word. Right? Let's get salt, and then we're going to get something for clothing, even because it says, and clothing is here and all. So the scripture speaks about, you know, keep keep it your garment, man. But this is, um, let's get something for salt. Let's get, uh, let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's get Matthew, what is that, 5, Matthew 5, 13. It says, ye are the salt of the earth. This is speaking of the Israelites, man, the, the people of the Lord, man. How? To the spirit, man. Okay, it says, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth, it is thenceforth 
good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men. The point is, okay, that um, the point is that through the Spirit, the Scriptures say, uh, uh, you are the salt of the earth, man. That's why our people are so lively, the Michael Jordans and the LeBrons and the, you know, through the Spirit, okay? You got to remember, right, it's saying you are the salt of the earth, right? So this salt is likened unto an attribute, a, 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 a quality, okay? Um, let's go, as a matter of fact, let's go, let's get it. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's, let's get that in the... Uh, why is it flipping up? Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get a, another version. Or oh, let's get it in. Um, we're going to get it in the NLT. Or we can get it in the good news. Hold on. This is uh, Matthew. Says Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 13. It says. Ye are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot, uh, underfoot as worthless. Okay, that's not the one I want. Uh, it was a good news translation. I think it's here. Okay, there you go. This is uh, the good news translation. It says, ye, verse 13, Matthew 5 and 13, ye are like salt for the whole human race. You see? Ye are like salt for the whole human race. You got that spirit in you, okay, as the most high people. Okay? The Lord said he made man upright, the Israelite man, but they sought out uh, wicked inventions, roughly paraphrasing. Oh, why this thing came up in my, in, 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 in my face and I can't move it, man? Why this thing tripping? It's a lucky year. Oh my goodness! What what what's this thing doing, man? I can't get this to come down. I'm about to wrap the lesson up, man. What what the? Bear with me. I'm trying to get this thing out of the way. My goodness! I can't believe this. Satan. That's Satan, man. Trying to get me off my swizzle, but it's not gonna work. Um, I mean, it's right in my way. It's, it's a button. It's a X button. I'm trying to get to it. How can I pull this thing? It's not going, man. Oh, man. You know what? Yeah, I'll just have to start it over. Matthew. What is it? Matthew 5. And uh, 13. It says, Ye are like Ye are like salt for the whole human race. But if salt loses its saltness, there is no way to make it salty again. It has become worthless, so it's thrown out and people trample on it. Okay? But it says, you are like salt for the whole human race. So that, that's that spirit. The spirit that's in you. Now, the scriptures tell you how the words, okay, of the Lord, we can get that. The scriptures tell you how how to work.